getting a little squished in there. Hello. We are going to get back to my roots here for a minute uh, and discuss what probably brought a lot of you to this channel in the beginning. Uh, I want to briefly touch on some frequently asked questions and some advice that I have because I am still constantly being asked questions on all of my platforms uh, and I just simply can't address all of them and it makes me feel terrible. I will say I feel like if you go back <laughs> far enough on my channel I've probably provided all of this information before however it's been like a couple years so I still highly recommend going back and watching those videos if you are someone that has reached out to me with um, pink questions that I haven't responded to but I'm going to try and answer some of them here again, just briefly. I also want to address some new things uh, when it comes to mini pigs. So this is kind of just gonna be like an all encompassing where I'm at with the mini pig world. <laughs> if you are new here, uh, my name is Adri. I run a 501 animal rescue. I did not run that when I started this channel. That's something that has slowly kind of developed and you can watch basically the whole journey <laughs> by going back through my videos. Uh, but what really got it started, at least what got this channel started, I will say, uh, is mini pigs. I've been a mini pig owner for over a decade now. I've been a pig lover since I was born, probably. We'll say three. Uh, that's all I wanted my parents never heard the end of my desire for a mini pig. One of my favorite stories is that my mom suggested maybe when I was around the age of like five, uh, I might be able to get one. And instead they gave me a kitten and I cried. Sorry cats. Uh, all I wanted was a pig. <laughs> so came to love the kitten, but I have always wanted a pig. I blame Charlotte's Web. In my time owning pigs, when I first started, uh, they hadn't really become like a fad pet yet. And as their popularity grew, the misinformation surrounding them also ran rampant. And I found myself constantly battling all of these false claims and just terrible advice. And so, Someone suggested, hey, you know, instead of spending all of your time trying to individually target owners that need help with their pigs, why don't you just create a YouTube channel or a blog and share everything you know all in one place? And that's literally all this channel was when I started. <laughs> that was the only intention I had to make a couple videos saying, hey, this is what I know about mini pigs and this is why there's a good chance they're not actually a good pet for you. And on the flip side, if you have a pig, this is what I've learned. <laughs> That's a little background information. As I became immersed in the whole community of pig ownership, um, yeah, I feel like right away I started taking in pigs also that needed homes. So I have rescued probably over a hundred pigs, absolutely over a hundred pigs. Uh, right now I have around 20. That's kind of what I try to keep it at. Um, I do adopt out some pigs, typically not until they are nearing adulthood though, because that eliminates the number one issue with mini pigs, which is, are they really mini? Oh, and every time I talk about how I have pigs, most people say there's no such thing. There's no such thing as mini pigs. The only way you're getting a mini pig is if you starve them. I have mini pigs. I have mini cows. I have mini horses. I have, I'm trying to think if I have any mini dogs. A min pin. Mini doesn't mean by definition something that fits in your purse or something that fits in your pocket, or something you can easily pick up. Mini means smaller than the standard, which a, pig, a mini pig is because your standard farm hog and even your standard pot belly is significantly larger than a true mini pig. Now, 
mini pig can be 50 pounds, 100 pounds, sometimes even 200 pounds. Normally that means you've got a cross or an overfed pig, which is a huge, huge problem in the industry. Overfeeding pigs is so terribly unhealthy. You can look up guidelines for what the ideal body score is for a pig. And while in the beginning, underfeeding was probably a bigger issue, uh, I feel like that stigma kind of circulated through the community enough where people learned, don't try to keep your pig small, don't deprive them of nutrients, stuff that should be pretty obvious, but honestly, there were so many terrible breeders out there telling people to feed their pigs like nothing but lettuce, I kid you not. And so it was something that needed addressing and I feel like it's a problem that's been mostly eradicated and now we're seeing the opposite. Um, I see it constantly, other pig rescues see it constantly, my vets all see it constantly, obese pigs. And that is also shortening their lifespan and ruining their organs and ruining their joints and all this stuff, just their quality of life. So we're all over the place, guys. Are you following along? Mini pigs are real. Pigs that stay under 10 pounds are not real. Under 20 pounds are not real. Pigs grow at a very slow rate. Any pig that's under five years is not finished growing. The majority of growth is done in the first couple of years, but not all of it. If you are someone that is looking for a pig and wants to be sure you're not being duped with a farm pig or a potbelly pig, there are some classic ways to tell. Uh, farm pigs have really large ears. That's kind of a, a good indication. Also, a farm pig is normally born about the size of a several month old mini pig. I mean, mini pigs, when they're born, can fit in your hand. Pot belly pigs are prone to having smushier snouts when they're babies. I love that feature in them. I think it's adorable, but it can be a little bit of a warning sign if you're looking at a mini pig and it has a really smushy face versus kind of a little bit longer snout. Just a couple little ways. There are a bunch of other ones, but <clears throat> quick rundown. <laughs> if you are looking for a pig, Get on Facebook and join some local farm type groups. There's all sorts. Get on Craigslist and look around. I am not exaggerating when I tell you I see 10 to 20 pigs a day that need new homes. They're not always piglets, but a lot of times they are. Uh, today, I saw someone with four pigs. Two of them are babies and then a mom and a dad that they're giving away, need to get rid of immediately. And the ad says, pets, breeders, or great for dinner. All the time. What was it? Probably a month ago now. I'm trying to think of how old these piglets are. <laughs> uh, someone was giving away four pregnant pigs and two male pigs. There's so many. The, we are flooded in pigs. So please, 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 as someone who's kind of been on both sides of the spectrum, look into rescuing or adopting a pig. You can get, if your preference really is to have a piglet, you can get those also. I'm telling you, I have no shortage. I could be overrun in piglets right now. <laughs> I particularly try to take in pregnant moms. I've not really done like full videos about them. I still like to share cute, clips and a little bit of information, but I felt like when I was posting consistent pig videos, adorable pig videos, I may have been adding to the problem that I was trying to fight, if that makes sense. I feel like even with all of my warnings and disclaimers and super candid advice about how challenging they can be as pets. Still, you see this cute pig and it kind of all goes out the window, right? <laughs> um, and so I cut way, way back on my cute pig content for a while. Um, and I think it made us all sad <laughs> because they let, I mean, they're amazing. 
And I don't want to have to do that really, but at the same time, I understand though where those desires come from because I'll see some random cute video of like a, I don't know, a baby lion and think, oh my God, it's adorable, I want one. In a moment of weakness, I'm never gonna get that lion. I'm just saying, I get it, I understand. But I, yeah, I need to find some kind of balance where I can show you the adorable pigs and I can do pig content again without encouraging people to go out and get them if it's not a good fit. And the most common complaints I get from pig owners that their pig constantly screams uh, and tries to bite them. That's super common in baby pigs. Here, hold on. Come here, baby, big pig. Come here, piggy. Come here, little boy. I promise he's coming. It just takes a second. Come on. Come here. Come here. Let's show him how crazy you are. Hi. You have seen or will see. Hi. There are a ton of cute videos of this little dude. Okay, well, of course, he's relatively quiet this time when I pick him up. Dang it. I can tell you. He is loud and he's trying to nip at me a little bit. Now we're looking. That's sweet. Um, he's bit my face. He's bit my fingers. He's bit my toes. He has screamed bloody murder sometimes. Random. I know nipping. Totally random. Um, we'll be the best of friends. He will cuddle with me, follow me everywhere, and then I'll just pick him up when he doesn't feel like it and he loses his mind. So even me who has raised hundreds of pigs, it's just, it comes with it. And there's not really any advice that I can give you to like totally prevent it. It's not a puppy, it's not a kitten, it's not that domesticated yet. It's also not that dumb. Very highly intelligent animals that have only really been kept as like pets by the masses over the last decade. And so, it, yeah, they're not a great pet <laughs> in a lot of ways. One of them being, they throw tantrums and you are going to think your pig hates you some days and some days they might. I have videos on how to try and, you know, curb those behaviors um, and bond with your pig. And it is possible and there are definitely steps to take, um, but they're not easy and they're not quick. It still takes a lot of commitment and patience. They are very clean animals but they can still be challenging to housebreak. Uh -huh. um, and so you really need to keep your pig in a small space with a pad and supervise them constantly and take them outside a lot to potty and uh -huh. monitor these things or they're gonna develop uh, really bad habits quickly that are gonna be hard to break. They're not destructive in a sense that like they're gonna chew up your shoes. Uh -huh. They're destructive in a sense where they're gonna learn to open your fridge and your cabinets. They're gonna rearrange your furniture. It's a whole nother level. Uh, if you take in a young piglet, you are probably gonna deal with some food aversions. I get that question a lot. I just got a mini pig, you won't eat anything. It's probably because the breeder didn't actually wean them because 90% of breeders out there now are just shit, okay? They're not good. Uh, they don't care and pigs breed borderline like rabbits. Uh, and so most likely you're going to get a pig that you don't know what its true adult size is going to be. You don't know what its temperament is. Very likely that it's never been handled. A ton of them come with mice, mites and lice, and it probably hasn't been weaned. Goat milk, baby rice cereal, warming up the food, baby food pouches, uh, mashed bananas. Sometimes just forcing a little tiny bit in the side of their mouth so they get the flavor of it. Not just jumping straight to like ugh, the hard foods, the mini pig pellets. You might have to do a slow transition for a while. Those are usually my go-to options though. And then kind of sneaking in like more and more substance. Um, so this pig that's walking away from us now back to his heating pad, two months old now. And doing baby rice cereal, a little bit of goat milk, lots of um, veggie and fruit pouches. And I'm starting to mix in some oatmeal 
and I'm gonna start soaking some Cheerios a little bit. Just stuff that you slowly increase basically the firmness of the food. What are other questions I'm getting all the time? Behavior is just the number one, the number one question. This is just supposed to be like the quickest overview. <laughs> Keep your pig current on wormer, ivermectin. Uh, that is what helps prevent the mites and lice. Diatomaceous earth is great to spread in their area if they're going to be outside. If they're going to be outside, know that they are insanely strong and smart. I like to use either um, hog panels or a really strong like cattle woven fence with wood, thick wood boards all along the bottom. And sometimes still I have to run an electric wire strand. I've also been using the electric netted fencing, which works as long as someone doesn't unplug it. And they will know because they know they like learn the sound of the ticking of the box. And so that's, yeah, that's caused some problems and we're having to rethink this whole thing. Basically, hi, I've had pigs for 10 years and even I have issues. <laughs> Granted, I have, yeah, like 20 pigs and they're constantly coming and going and they're all different personalities and all of that stuff, but still, it's gotta be really secure. <clears throat> they also sunburn, so they definitely need a place to get out of the sun. Don't do great with really cold temperatures. So you're gonna wanna have a heat source if you live somewhere that is cold. They have a pretty high tolerance for heat, but I still always like to have yeah, shady spots and also um, little kiddie pools for them to wade in. You never wanna leave them unattended with other pets because they are absolutely a prey animal. And even with dogs that have been raised with them and love them and you'd never expect an issue, there can be an issue. Uh, I've taken in pigs that have been victims of those issues. It's just, you're trying to fight biology, nature almost, by expecting everything to be perfect between those two. I have in my front yard kind of my more like socialized pigs, I guess. Um, we have a few different pig areas. <laughs> and these are the ones that basically like I raised more or less. And they're out there with my small dogs because they're bigger than those dogs. And because I have four cameras and because I'm always home. Even then, I am so attuned, like if I hear the tiniest little noise, I am down the street. It doesn't matter what time of night, day, I'm running out there to check because you just never know. It's an adorable relationship sometimes between pigs and your other pets, but don't ever fall into like a false sense of security with those relationships. This recording right now is 23 minutes long. And honestly, I am just about my third trimester right now. And that's a lot of talking and I'm out of breath. <laughs> so I'm gonna edit this down and make it something that's hopefully watchable. Um, mostly, yes, I wanted to quickly give a rundown on all the frequently asked questions so that I stop feeling guilty for not being able to answer everything. Also, possibly more importantly for me right now, I wanted to kind of explain why I moved away from the ever so popular pig videos that created this channel to begin with that probably if we're being honest would have made this channel continue to grow a lot faster if I'd kept up with them. Um, <laughs> I just have to do like what I feel is right by the pigs. Otherwise, like why am I devoting so much time and money <laughs> into saving them if I'm a part of the problem? So going forward, I want to be able to offer pig content again. I love it. These pigs are everything. But yeah, just, you know, I want to do it responsibly and I want to do it knowing that all of you watching understand like the gravity of what it means to be a pig owner. I think they're wonderful. I would not discourage anyone from going out and adopting a pig as long as you know and as long as you are ready. Thank you for sitting with me through this. I'm going to do pig content again. And so if you came here for that, if that's something that interests you, if you're a pig lover, if you are a potential future pig owner, if you're a current pig owner, whatever, pigs, if pigs, then stick around, like, subscribe, all that stuff that lets me know. Mm -hmm.